And with Milton, is it headed toward the Carolinas? Yeah, our first solar team of meteorologists, Rachel Coulter, Lisa Piegas, staying on top of this storm. And uh, Rachel, is it uh, is it taking the path of Helene? And Lisa, what about the potential catastrophic impact in Florida? Fortunately, this will be a very different storm. It's going to stay to our south, but this is going to be devastating for our neighbors down in Florida. I know, Lisa, you're going to be talking more about those impacts. Yep. That Florida, Floridians are going to be dealing with. I want to get you to some of these stats that we're seeing, especially if you're tuning in for the first time today. This is now a category five hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 175 miles per hour. Earlier this morning with Chief Meteorologist Al Conklin, the storm was still a category one hurricane, so it has intensified rapidly. It's going to continue to work just north of the Yucatan Peninsula and the environment's going to be a little bit more hostile and so it does look like we'll have a weakening trend. However, this is still likely going to be a major hurricane upon landfall along the west coast of Florida before it moves over the peninsula and extends out towards the Atlantic Ocean. And here's that forecast track which shows you anywhere that center of circulation or that eye could go and that will all stay south of the Carolinas. Uh, and this is really due in part because this cold front that's moving through the Carolinas as we speak, high pressure going to be building in behind that. So not only will that help to keep Milton to our south, although I do think that we could get some indirect impacts in the way of some added cloud cover midweek. It'll be a little bit more noticeably breezy as well on Thursday, but we're also going to be dealing with much more fall conditions. It is 86 degrees right now in Charlotte. It's 85 in Lincolnton, 86 in Lancaster and Chesterfield. And our dew points right now are still running in the low to mid 60s, but these numbers in our mountain communities and the foothill communities are even lower than where they were when you were tuning in at noon today. So that cold front already having an impact on some of that humidity that's just going to continue to drop from here so that by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, this is where our dew points are going to be, which is just a measure of how much moisture is in the atmosphere. The lower this number, the better it feels out there. And when you get dew points in the 30s and the 40s, it feels pleasant, if not refreshing out there. And that has an implication on how quickly our temperatures are able to drop. We're going to go from the 80s to the 70s by 11 o'clock, 70 degrees, 60s overnight, and then heading out the door tomorrow morning. Look at your screen. We've got 56 degrees forecast low temperature in Charlotte, low 50s along the I-40 corridor, low 40s in our mountain communities. We've been talking about this since last week, how, of course, we'd have those cooler conditions working in. I know so many are still without power, so hopefully we're able to get some more of those donated goods in the way of blankets and coats up to our higher elevations. Temperatures here the next few days going to top out in those low to mid 70s, waking up in the 50s. Then we get towards Thursday. That's when it turns a little more breezy here at home, even cooler by Friday and Saturday morning in the Charlotte Metro. Could be waking up to the 40s heading out the door as we get towards work and school this weekend. Still likely going to be below average, especially in the morning hours, just a little above average in the afternoons with high temperatures in the upper 70s to the low 80s for that pan Panthers game, but dry conditions are expected here at home. Of course, we're still going to be tracking Milton's impacts to our south. Going to toss things over to meteorologist Lisa Viegas with what those impacts look to be. Yeah, Rachel. So first of all, we have hurricane watches in place as far east as Orlando, just inching closer to parts of the east coast of Florida. That will be upgraded into some warnings here in the coming days. So when it comes to rain total, specifically just rain, we're not talking about the storm surge. We are expecting over seven inches of accumulation. Then you add in the storm surge, which is going to rise potentially up to 25 feet. So yes, the words that have been thrown around, devastating, catastrophic for those like Tampa Bay all along the west coast of Florida, not to mention the wind speeds that are going to be pushing out of the west. I mean, gusts are going to easily exceed 70 miles an hour. Overall, around 55 to 75 miles per hour will be the going wind speed. And on top of that, isolated spots around 95 to 110 miles an hour, which adds to that storm surge. So remember, we talked about potentially up to around 25 feet. Well, yes, right along the coast, not only are we going to have extreme beach erosion, but a lot of homes, businesses will be completely wiped out because again, this is just an example of what 12 plus feet could look like wiping out at least a home. And we're talking about 20 feet potential there right along parts of the west coast of Florida. Obviously, we're going to keep an eye out what we can expect when it comes to our friends down in Florida. If you know anyone in the area, tell them to evacuate or if you're planning on doing any vacations, cancel. And that's what we can expect. All right. Thanks a lot, Lisa. Well, coming up first at